Hello and welcome to our session, Use SAP S4 HANA Migration Cockpit for a new SAP S4 HANA implementation. My name is Heike Jensen, and I'm part of the product management team for the Migration Cockpit. And together with my colleague, Elisaveta Groshevnikova, we will present, present this topic today. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good evening. I'm Elisaveta. I'm working in product management team of SAP S4 HANA Migration Cockpit. And warm welcome from my side. Okay, thanks. I first want to give you a little bit the big picture why we are talking about this topic today. SAP supports companies to become intelligent enterprises. For an enterprise to run intelligently, it must run integrated end-to-end -end business processes powered by data. So one question on your way is how to bring data to SAP as for HANA. In, on, in order to answer this question, we will have a short look at the different ways to SAP as for HANA. And then we will focus on the recommended tool for the new implementation scenario, which is the migration cockpit. Yeah. First, the different ways to SAP as for HANA. I guess this slide is rather known in the market. You see the three transition scenarios to SAP as for HANA. And the first one is the so-called system conversion. It is so to say a reuse of the system by an in-place conversion. And what does that mean? You take all data with you in order to start in a very fast way with SAP as for HANA. You do not re-engineer processes. This way is possible to move to SAP as for HANA Cloud Private Edition and to SAP as for HANA. The second path is called selective data transition. This is a more individualized way to SAP as for HANA. Only parts of the original systems system are migrated. For example, only parts of historical data or only dedicated organizational units. Also re-engineering might be part of the project. Typically, these projects are realized in form of consulting projects. Also here, the target systems can be SAP S4 HANA Cloud Private Edition and SAP S4 HANA. And then there is the third way, which is the new implementation. And here you start from scratch with a new system. This means you can take full advantage of the new processes and innovations. You can do re-engineering. And regarding data, you only migrate what is necessary to start in a new system, such as master data, balances, open items, and so on. SAP offers best practices, and as you will see later on, migration objects which cover the usual scope. It is also possible to um, adjust these pre-delivered objects, and we will talk about that later. For the new implementation, yeah, it's possible by using the new implementation in order to move to SAP S4 HANA Public Cloud, to move to S4 HANA Cloud Private Edition, and to move to SAP S4 HANA. And regarding the move to the public cloud, the migration cockpit is the only tool which is provided. And with this, I hand over to Elisa. Thank you, Heike. Now we're ready to proceed with overview on SAP Wuhana Migration Cockpit. Migration Cockpit is a tool that helps you to migrate your data to SAP Wuhana and SAP Wuhana Cloud. It's already included in licenses. It contains pre-configured migration objects. An example of migration object can be bank migration object, customer, supplier, and the rules are integrated in the tool. There are no developer skills required to start using migration cockpit. 
it's a theory app, which, which is called Migrate Your Data. You are provided with a step-by-step -step guidance through the whole migration process from the project creation to the migration. And you take advantage of the automated cross-object value mapping. The value mapping functionality is working through the whole project, independent of how many objects you have in there. If you would like to edit the migration object or create a new migration object to use it in migration cockpit, you can use a modeling environment, the tool which is called Migration Object Modeler. And we will talk about it in later slides. Now let's see how the data migration process looks like. The data migration process for the new implementation has two points to remember. First of all, data migration is only one key task during the whole transition to SAP Solana. And the second point to remember, make sure you understand your requirements and plan them as soon as possible. So how you start the process in case of new implementation, in case of using migration cockpit. You start by clicking Migrate Your Data app and create the project. By the project creation, you select the needed migration objects. It's the first icon that you see on the slide. After the project is created, you need to get data somehow. There are two ways of doing that, or two approaches. There's two icons you can also see on the screen. You can migrate your data using staging tables, or you can migrate your data directly from SAP system. Afterwards, the data should be mapped and transformed, and then you're ready to go with the simulation step. You can simulate several times until you have 100 successful simulation, and afterwards you proceed with the migration and migrate your data to SAP Fuhana and SAP Fuhana Cloud. In the next slide, I would like to focus on the second step, get data. I have already mentioned there are two possible approaches embedded in migration cockpit. The first one, migrate data using staging tables. When you create project, the staging tables are created automatically. Then you need to think about how you would like to fill the staging tables. You can use XML template files. So you download the template XML, fill it with the data and upload back to migration cockpit. Or you can use SAP or third-party detail tool. And after you get after you get the data, you can then proceed with your project and transfer data from the staging tables to the target SAP Fuhana system. The second approach, migrate data directly from SAP system, is possible when you have an access to the source system through RFC connection. There are many scenarios supported by migrate data directly, and you will know more information about this approach in the next slide from my colleague. Heike. Um, in the next slides, we will focus on my data using staging tables. And afterwards, I will hand over to my colleague Heike. How to migrate data using staging tables? First of all, you start migration cockpit by clicking Fury app, migrate your data. Then you already know that the staging tables are created automatically. And then you fill the staging tables with the data using XML or other tools of choice. Afterwards, you process your data. Uh, you can see the real screenshots of the migration cockpit in the middle of the screen. The data load is API based. After you process your data and have a current status that you also can see on the screen, 100% successful uh, simulation, you can proceed with the migration, you migrate your data to SAP Fuhana Cloud, SAP Fuhana Cloud private edition, and SAP Fuhana. There are more than 170 migration objects available with SAP Fuhana 2021 release, and more than 200 migration objects available in SAP Fuhana Cloud 2111 release. Now we will focus on how you can fill the staging tables. As I said, it's completely your decision. You can do it by using XML files, or by using your preferred ETL tool. 
Usually your choice should depend on deployment option if you migrate to SAP S4 HANA or cloud. What is your system setup? And also the licenses that you need for the particular ETF tool. We highly recommend you to check the learning materials on how to fill the staging tables. The first material is blog, part one methods for populating the staging tables. There are also part two, part three, part four, which are linked in there. You can access knowledge-based article and see the FAQ on migrate data using staging tables approach. And you can also view metrics to see which licenses you need for which tool to fill the staging tables. In, the, in this screenshot, you can see a big screenshot, a, a, big, a big view on the migration cockpit. You can see we have monitoring functionality. You can see each block what you have performed in migration cockpit. With the job management functionality, you can influence background jobs. And in the right part of the screenshot, you can see the action list. So you can upload file, prepare, you can work in mapping task, simulate, migrate, and etc. Some of you who already use migration cockpit actively, you can ask what's new coming with SAP S4HANA 2021 release and SAP S4HANA Cloud 2111 release. We have some new functionality for you. First of all, you can delete a mapping task by uploading an empty file. You can also now transport projects from one system to another. And using migration object modeler, you can reapply customer adoptions even after content upgrade. In the cloud release, there is also a big functionality coming with 2111. You can now access the migration results view where you can see more detailed info, information on the migration uh, fields, migration uh, data that was migrated, and you can even access the data with a, another app, which is linked in there, and see the results of your migration. To view the screenshot the explanations on the development news, you you can go to our planning pages and check the new section after this presentation. And with this, I hand over to my colleague, Heike Jensen. She will tell you about migrating directly from SAP system approach. Okay, thanks, Elisa. Yeah, I will give you a little bit more insights into this uh, second approach, migrating data directly. Yeah, important to know is that both approaches, so no matter if it's staging or direct transfer, are started by the same app, which is migrate your data. But for this approach, direct transfer, the uh, SAP source system is connected via an RFC connection. And which systems can be connected? You see it below in this list. It can be an ERP system, RFS system, EWM system, CRM or APO. And further scenarios uh, are planned for the future. Also here for this approach, we have pre-delivered objects. And in release 2021, it's about 150 pre-delivered objects. The way how data is loaded into the S4HANA target system is the same as in the staging approach. So, Below the object, there is an SAP standard API, which is used to post or book the data. A difference is that uh, using the transfer, you can currently only transfer data to SAP S4HANA Cloud Private Edition and to SAP S4HANA. It is currently not possible to use the direct transfer to migrate data to the public cloud. This is currently only possible by using staging, uh, the staging approach. Yeah, this should shall give you a little bit the look and feel in the system. So once you push the button and say create project, you get to the screen. And here you then just choose the uh, source the type of source system. So if it's an ERP system or another type, and you just choose the RFC connection. 
And as soon as your administrator has created this RFC, it's visible here in this screen. Yeah, the next step is then to choose the organizational unit. And this unit is predefined by SAP and again depends on the source system. This means on the scenario. And uh, if you are migrating from an ERP system, this organizational unit is the company code. And you can choose here one or more company codes to be selected from. And also on the screen, you see all these predefined migration objects. And you can just pick what you want to use. And I already want to mention it at this point in time that, of course, you can adapt these pre-delivered objects or you can even create own objects. And this you do by going to the modeling environment. Yeah, this selection is a very important topic, especially when you use the direct transfer. And as we saw in the um, migration uh, app, you can choose the organizational unit and the pre-delivered objects. But in the back end, by using the modeling environment, you have even more possibilities. There are the so-called filters, which more or less represent the organizational units. And in addition, you have the possibility to restrict the selection on table field level. You can use a body selection exit where you can even use your own ABAP coding to influence the selection. And there is the so-called skip rule which enables you to skip dedicated records which have already been selected into the cockpit. Yeah, also here, what is new in SAP S4HANA 2021? We have three huge topics. So one is a new step, which is prepare mapping tasks. We have the migration results view. We have now a detailed view of the migration process. And we have this new body selection exit. So as we only give a short view on the new topics, you find here below under the link, the complete development news for the new version. Yeah, the first huge topic is the new step prepare mapping tasks. Up to release 2020, when you press the button select, there was automatically there was automatically executed a second step. So this was only implicitly. And the prepare mapping tasks was, so to say, executed automatically. And now with 2021, we have separated these two steps. So if you now press select data, really only the data is selected from the source. And we have now an additional task, which says prepare mapping tasks. And with this step, the system creates proposal values for the mapping. So it means source value is target value is the proposal. Yeah, why did we separate these two steps? On the one hand side, it's now possible to optimize the, town, the downtime. So imagine you use uh, uh, Excel to upload your mapping and you do not need these proposal values because you have created the mappings uh, during your tests already in an Excel. So in this case, you can skip this prepare mapping task step. And this means the downtime is optimized. You have now more flexibility because during the tests, when you do a lot of fine tuning regarding the selection, so you are trying around with different possibilities and perhaps create own rules and so on. So if you now press the select data button, you only select the data and you don't create mapping proposals anymore. So this means more flexibility. And the last um, reason is that you have more transparency now because you see the different steps running in the monitoring. Second huge new topic is the migration results view. And this view is 
now available for both approaches, so also for staging. So if you are in the migration object instances view, you have now a new tab. You see it on the upper right corner. It's called migration results. And what is new? So you see the record which has been selected from the source system. Imagine it's, it's for example, activity type A1. And after the migration, you see now in this view, the newly created uh, key or document number in the S4HANA system. And you can even click on that key and this opens then the respective application app so that you can have a direct look at the newly created record in the S4HANA system. With feature pack stack one, we also plan a download function so that you then have uh, the data available in an easy to consume format. Yeah, we have in 2021, uh, again, a new screen, which is a detailed view of the migration process. So when you are in the project screen, you find there now an additional link, which is called detailed view. And with this link, you get here on this screen. On this screen, you see the different step steps which might be used by the object. And in case this object has different transfer options, you also see these transfer options here. And this detailed view is especially of use in case of errors or for very complex objects, such as, for example, fixed assets. This object has a lot of steps, and now you can see them here on this screen. Yeah, and also new is this body for selection. So yeah, in 2021, you have this additional possibility. So now you can even use own ABAP coding in order to influence the selection from the source system. So what is the difference between this uh, body selection exit and the skip rule? The skip rule was there already before. So with the exit, you can control whether data will leave the system or not. And you can add, remove, or alter keys of selected data records. In comparison, the skip rule can only skip data records which have already been transferred to the cockpit. And it can only restrict the data set which has been already um, yeah, selected from the source system. Yeah, in the, uh, in the last slides, you find more detailed information on this modeling environment and also further material. material. So with this, I hand over again to Elisa. Thank you, Heike. Now we're ready to go with the migration objects, which embedded in migration cockpit. Migration object describes how to migrate data for a specific business object to SAP s You can find source and target structures in there, and also even the relationship between these structures. With migration objects, you can migrate your master and transactional data to SAP s and attention, no historical data is possible to be migrated with migration objects. Why? The answer is very simple. Historical data is out of the scope for the new implementation. In the migration cockpit, you also have automated mapping between source and target structure. The migration programs are automatically generated, as I already said, no programming skills required. And the standard APIs are used to post the data to SAP s In the right part of the screen, you can see the screenshot with the list of migration objects. You can see bank exchange rate on the screen. And you can see the filter possibility. You can choose the approach you are interested in and see the list of the migration objects available in there. After the presentation, you can access these two lists for the migration objects for SAP s and SAP s Cloud. 
what if you would like to enhance a specific migration object or create a new migration object? You can use migration object modular. You start using this tool with the transaction LTMOM. It's presented in the screen. And when creating the new migration object, you can adjust your specific requirements. You can uh, also create SAP standard objects that are not yet part of migration cockpits or maybe planned in the future. And for that, you use standard APIs or code your function module. You can also enhance migration object. You can adjust the input structure, for example, add additional field or make mandatory field optional. You can map structures and fields and you can change or add migration object selection criteria if you use direct transfer approach. When you use direct transfer approach, you access the source system and selection is made to the source system. So you can influence this, this selection. You can find more information in our deep dive slides with the instructions and very detailed overview. The links you can find in the screen. I would like to give you further information and present you our landing pages. We have two of them, one for SAP Spuhana, one for SAP Spuhana Cloud. And there you can check the most actual information on migration cockpit. You can start with getting started tab to see the overview presentation on the migration cockpit. You can check the news. You can check the training. Uh, course and education, you get yourself with uh, more deep dive slides. We have also one slide from SubTicket team. You can check it after the presentation and see what kind of free sources you can use to expand your career. With this slide, I would like to thank you. Thank you for being today with us. You can see some additional demo links to the migration cockpit, and you can see the content information of product management team of SAP Sohana Migration Cockpit. Thank you and bye. Thank you for joining and enjoy the rest of TechEd.